Now I want to take a brief look at the player profiling stats for Six Max Play. And the following information was provided by uh, author named Brent. And you can find this if you do have Holdem Manager in the articles section in that program. So what he's done here is analyzed his database for the five best or the five most winning players in, I believe, NL100 to NL1000. And this is the respective breakdown of their their stats, and yeah, not only their stats but also their stats over time, and their stats in different positions. So we'll just briefly go through this and have a quick look at yeah how that how that played out. Uh, we have here all the players' basic stats combined. It means all five of these guys together played 130,000 hands. Okay, almost 131, and they only won uh, nine grand. Okay, they're again adjusted EV. Okay, adjusted expected value based on the times when they pushed, and when they got it all in before the river, they should have been uh, they should have earned uh, ten thousand more. Okay, uh, big blinds per hundred for what they actually did win was uh, thirteen, and the EV uh, big blind per hundred would have been the fifteen. Okay, the EV adjusted so to say. These guys, six max winners, are playing 22% of their hands. Uh, raising, again, you see here this 2 3 3 4 um, ratio, or other way around. Um, yeah, 4 3 2, yeah, 3 2, something like that. Um, three bets, very similar to the full ring guys. Uh, full ring winning players at 6%, 5 6%. Went to showdown, also very similar at 26. Um, one money at the showdown, just over 50. Aggression factors of around 2 to 3, sometimes 4. And yeah, the percentage, yeah, aggression percentage, 34%, something like that. So here you have here average big blinds per hundred for the six positions, and this is yeah, impressive, right? They've won money together in all other positions outside of the blinds. So this is yeah, this is the area where they're really losing a lot, uh, and this is the respective V pip and PFR for the different positions. So you see here they're they're playing a wider range as they're getting into later positions in general and as as you should also okay and again this ratio you see it stays quite constant and this is this is yeah this is a ratio that's actually a really good principle to adhere to anytime you're getting into 2 1 um, ratios it's I mean it's playable it's definitely doable depending on table conditions but you want to be in general more like this you know um, three-fourths of the time that you play you want to be raising maybe two-thirds uh, anytime you get into the half situation you might want to be increasing that PFR percentage in the long run hey you got the three bets went to showdown based on position and how that all worked out uh, the following charts are really impressive this is um, a graph that you can generate via hold a manager and it is yeah, it basically shows you how you're performing over time. So this this line right here, this light green, is actually what uh, he should have won with expected value. Uh, that means uh, the times that he pushed, his winning should have been here, but because of variance, right, they were only here, which is this dark green line or his actual winnings. The blue line is in his winnings per showdown, and the red line underneath is his winnings without a showdown. Okay, uh, he says here, you know, this is. Uh, the author himself at 78,000 hands, and yeah, this is how he broke down. He's playing 21% VPIP, irrespective of position. Again, you see here two thirds uh, VPIP to PFR ratio. Uh, three betting right at 5%, and his win rate was right at 14 big blinds per 100 hands played. Very impressive, solid stats. You see his his lines. You know, this is a professional player. And yeah, that's that's how it worked out over seven eight thousand hands for him. He won six uh, six grand, something like that. Okay, next guy was um, also a very good player, but um, he as you see here, he had a much more of a roller coaster ride. Uh, he's got only twelve thousand hands. Um, yeah, which of course you're going to see a lot more variance over twelve thousand hands uh, as opposed to seventy eight or whatever Brent had. But uh, again, similar B pit PFR. Uh, higher higher three bet and he's actually performing well at this point with 22 per hundred but again this is enormous upswing right here and what he's saying is uh, the guy's running even really strong with uh, uh, EV wise with an adjusted big blinds per hundred of 16 right so strong player 
gives you an idea of what kind of numbers you're looking at uh, when you do play six max. And this guy here, a um, bit more, yeah, even even more of a roller coaster ride. Um, ride the same amount of hands, and because of his increased uh, increased aggression, yeah, he's pushing a lot of people off, and that's why he's you know he's showing this higher one money without showdown. Um, but because of that aggression, you see, <laughs> you see how that can affect your uh, your win rate. And I mean, look here at this swing, right? This guy was at 1,300 here, at uh, let's call it 11,000 hands, and bottomed out at let's call it 12.5, so 1,500 hands, something like that. Even fewer here. Um, but that swing is a good third. Uh, fourth of his entire winnings over the span of let's call it a thousand hands, uh, maybe two thousand, and that's that's a big swing. Okay, so here you see this chart that goes up quite quite constantly and took a hit, a steady increase here, and then this enormous swing. All right. um, again, aggression, its respective effects, and yeah, in the end he had this enormous swing up to thirteen hundred, right here within a few hands. So, yeah, just to show you what's possible, the next guy here is all over the place. And he's playing 22% of all hands, raising almost exactly the same uh, at 13 big blinds, more or less, per 100. Um, solid variance <laughs> freestyle of play by this guy. Um, quick look at his notes. Uh, one thing to note about this is he doesn't have any huge swings except at the very end of the graph, but that's partially because he started running bad there uh, with all in EV. Solid variance free style of play by this guy, which when looking at this at 15,000 hands, that doesn't necessarily look at uh, look like variance style or variance free style. Okay, this is a real roller coaster. And what he was saying is here, the, you know, the swings had to do with uh, hard luck when he was pushing. And yeah, that's how his line looked. Coming tables are showing you the median big blinds per hundred at the different VPIP percentage levels or PFR percentage levels um, and the other stats for again six max players from NL100 to NL1000. Uh, same guy, same I think the continuation of the article above and this, this shows you kind of optimal stats based on his numbers for winning six max players. So the uh, what I've done is here in yellow highlighted the area you want to you want to be at um, somewhere between 16, yeah, let's call it 15 to 18 percent, right? It's going to give you a median big blinds per hundred of three to four. Okay, and again here, about every five hands, uh, every four or five hands, you're actually playing irrespective of position. And as always, you have this, you know, three to two, four to three ratio. Three betting, again, five to six percent. That's very standard. That was the highest median. Uh, calling three bets, you got to be really careful here, guys. Um, not doing that too often. Right? When you're calling three bets, especially out of position, that is uh, getting into negative big blinds per hundred. Four bet ranges. These guys, um, yeah, right at right at only two percent. Okay, as the highest the highest medians that he had. Um, careful with these two stats. I mean, you're looking at you know three betting. Four to six, seven percent on average, uh, and four betting then accordingly, as you see here. Uh, aggression post flop. A lot of these guys. I mean, the most winning players we're looking at three to four. Okay, somewhere high twos to low low fours, let's say. Uh, aggression percentage post flop. You know, whenever they're making a move post flop, they're making an aggressive move one time in three. Folding the flop raises. You got flop c bet percentage. This is an interesting actually. The guys that are c-betting up to 75% of the time had the highest win rate. Okay, folding the flop c-bets uh, right at 60%, which is indicative of how often you're going to miss when you're uh, holding a non a non-paired hand pre-flop. Turn c-bets 40, 50%. Um, folding to turn c-bets yeah, a little under 30. What's the highest win rate for that? And we get on uh, down here. We've got here one when sh when saw the flop. Okay, so whenever these guys actually played a pre-flop hand, this is the percentage of time that they actually won 
when they did see the flop. Okay, and the guys making four big blinds per hundred were winning when they saw the flop only 43 to 45 percent of the time. One money when they saw the uh, when they went to showdown was look at this only 50 percent of the time. So that means they lost, right? The I mean, the other half. Um, and that's I mean of course the higher you go here the the higher your win rate is. <laughs> but you see it here even even when these guys were only winning at showdown of uh, they had a percentage of uh, one when they saw the showdown of only 50 percent they were still making money and that was because of course they're performing well when they're pushing people off the hands and uh, yeah winning before they get to the showdown so again anytime you know your one win when the showdown is over 50 that's a good thing and the higher the better of course with this specific stat um, yeah same here um, good then then he goes into further analyze um, flop aggression and, and multiple other factors but uh, we don't need to go into that in this video again if you do have hold manager check out that entire article definitely worth your time and that was just a quick synopsis of the primary stats